another new build property and all this wallpaper is being stripped off and when you come on to a job like this and you first walk into the room it's looking all nice and fresh it looks pretty straightforward but notice how the paint uh, the paper is overlapped onto the top of this dado rail and then up the side of the case in here see how much it's overlapped well the reason why that's like that again on this side there it's nearly half an inch overlapped there And if you look around this window, again, quite a big overlap there. Well, more than likely, there'll be a bead of sealant there, which the paper will be hiding it. Now, it's not too bad because it's a white paper. If that was a darker colour paper, you wouldn't want to be putting it so far onto the frame. Also, on this side, I've started stripping the walls. See, behind the backing paper, the patches. It's the old paint behind the paper. So it looks to me like this has been stripped in the past, repapered, and that's why it's looking so patchy. On the back of the paper, well, you can see there on the wall the emulsion, and on the back of the paper there. Now, this will be an ordinary contract mat. So, when it was applied to the wall, more than likely it's not been applied correctly, it's not been thinned off, which is not necessarily the fault of the painter. That can just be down to pressure, the fact that these places have to be turned over really quick. So you just get your stuff on and you're off onto your next plot. It's pressure from the companies that maybe you're working for or contracted to, because they're the people who will supply um, any fittings and paint work, uh, paint for the job. So any electrical sockets, um, kitchens, bathrooms, floors that go in will all be decided by um, the company who are building, basically. The painters will come in and put on whatever is the... These houses are turned over so quick that We'll have people moving into these properties while still building further down the street. That's how quick they want to get these turned over. This is the original paint that was put on. Um, customer said that when they moved in, it was all done magnolia right the way through. Um, and they were still building at the other end of the um, estate. <clears throat> so, what you are going to do is when you first move in is you're not necessarily going to be wanting to start redecorating. So it may be a few years will pass before you get tired of this. And then room by room, you go around and you start to do your, um, your little projects. So again, this has been papered a few times. Now this is coming off and I want to be able to line this and emulsion it. But if I was to just put my lining paper straight over this, see how this is wetting it off. Well, where your joints sit with your lining paper, they can start springing when you wet this paint. Also, these edges 
will show up really bad. That would just look terrible under the lining paper. So while I'm wetting the wall in, you see the plaster's getting wet and I want this to come off as well. You see how I've been taking it back. Some areas it may leave some because the plaster work will be uneven and you won't be able to get it all out. But what we'll do is clean the whole wall off and take a look at it then. Warm soapy water, just keep wetting it in. I'm not going too far ahead of myself with this. I'm only going to go a metre or so past where I'm working. But I'm constantly, as I'm working across, that metre ahead is going to be getting wet. And just keep coming back over where you're working, even onto the plaster that you've cleaned off. Just to ensure that the whole lot gets thorough soaking and we get every bit off. See how the plaster is wet behind, a little bit of soap through this paint and gotten around it. So I'm not wanting to dig into the plaster. It's inevitable that you may do, but that will be dealt with before you lie. Sometimes you may just have to come at it from a different angle again because the plaster work underneath would be uneven. So it's not necessarily just the painting trade. So again the plasterers when they come in to skim these walls, as long as they're looking pink when they walk out, they look okay. It's only until you get your first coat of paint on that you'll ever notice anything bad. I've already actually gone through to the plaster board behind the paper board. This plaster is that thin. Soften that paint up. You can just literally just rub that into a paste almost. Oh yeah, contract mat. The only uses for it is for this. Turning the job over really quick. You never get good results with it. 
goes dirty really quick. All my years decorating, it's rare that you'll come across the paint that will stay on the new plaster. And the problem is compounded even more when you paper over it. You can actually, just by putting that paper on, completely ruin the wall this happens I have a feeling that this wall is going to be that bad I'm going to have to mist coat this before I even start to fill because I think even putting the light across it to highlight anything won't be good enough. may look nice and neat and clean at the beginning so it will soon look a mess if this was done correctly the paper would be off I'd just be able to wipe over to remove the paste and we're ready to keep going This just holds you up. So when I clean off the whole wall, I'll change my water and I'll go back over it just to remove anything that I've left on. That's the paper and all the paint off this wall. All the paint, apart from anywhere where there's any slight deviations in the plaster. We'll get to the whole... Uh, so the paint will sit in any of these areas with dinges there. Here, actually we're in straight up there, is a joint in the board. So if I just get this straight edge on it, I'm going to try another look. You can see how much that joint is out there. Also, this dado rail, whenever you're fitting something like this, if there's any paper on the wall, remove the paper first. If you have a problem like this behind, then that paper will be sat on top of there and you'll put your um, dado rail over the top. Now, fortunately, this one has actually been secured with screws. So I can see one area there that's been filled. So it's been, this one has been screwed. Now, I have seen this put up with um, liquid no nails and that can be really detrimental especially if you've got paper on the wall and then this goes on top so you'll stick this with your no nails 
over the paper and then in the future if you come to strip the water will soak through the paper and if it's like this behind this is coming off like I say fortunately this has been filled screwed and filled you can see there the paper behind so that's going to be running behind this always remove it beforehand because it's going to be awkward now for me to get a neat edge there I'll have to try and remove that to get some filler there if we look at this side that's not been touched yet remember I said that um, there was a slight overlap all the way round that's because of the gap that should have been filled before any of this was coated up now, a little bit of cork here in the corner and then up this side really the paper should have come to the never overlapped and I can't really see anything here apart from underneath there this gloss work which hasn't been keyed so there's a chance that if this paper's lifting when it's been repapered you brought it around this edge to try and stop that maybe yeah it should be cut right neat to the corner again on this side wasn't really anything obvious very very fine crack where this timber is sitting against the wall but again this was papered quite a bit out I can almost see a slight yellow in there of paint to about here so again gaps that's why that's like that and then we come round to this side and go the gaps now up the side here this was papered right over and there's the sealant which again has got paper behind it so that there is paper running behind that sealant which is our old friend the cork so I will be removing all that, fill that properly, so I'll get my paper to sit nice against that edge. Behind the cork, just there, is some lightweight filler. It's all good there. It's only when you start to uncover and dig deeper that you start to discover problems. So you take your paper off, backing's on, looks fine. Start to wet in, then start to see these dark patches. Straight away you know what you're up against. But then when you come down to your new plaster, you start to find all the different marks throughout the plaster, the bad joints. If that stood in, was level when it was put in then the plasterboards go on nice and level if the studding's out plasterboards go on bad if you don't level your boards then the plasterers come along and just going to put his um, mud on his plaster straight away again just a thin coat to get it done too many cowboys and not enough Indians 
My dad always said to me, there's two ways to do a job. Do it the correct way or the wrong way. Horses for courses.